Hello everyone and welcome to episode 14 of the Nitinina Diaries. I'm Doris, otherwise known as Nitinina on Ravelry and Instagram. And I'm very happy to be back here with all of you today. What is the beginning of April, April 2nd, Saturday. I cannot believe a whole first quarter of the year has gone by. And I haven't had a chance to record in that first quarter of the year because I've had two big milestones um, happening in my life. And uh, so it really didn't give me the time to, to meet with you guys here and record. One being the fact that I'm in the midst of looking for a new job and the other would be um, taking care of my dad who has been ill. But the good news is on both fronts, it's everything's moving forward positively. So I'm very excited and confident. Um, thank the Lord of all the great things that are about to happen um, and to come true. So again, very happy to be here with all of you. I've missed you very much. I missed reading your comments. Um, I can't wait to hear what you're all been doing lately, what's on your needles. So definitely um, write something in the comments section um, and I'd love to respond to it. If you're a new viewer here, a very warm welcome to you and hopefully you'll stick around, decide to give me a thumbs up in this video and subscribe because we'd love to have you here, part of my little small community here in Maker's Land. Um, Yes, so uh, I can't believe it. It's April. Spring is around the corner, and you know what? I love spring. I just think it's it's a new page, a new chapter. Um, everything starts blooming. The weather gets warmer. I can finally go out and start walking again. So I'm looking forward to doing all of that. So I've got lots to show you, so why don't we just uh, dive in and... Get yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea or your favorite beverage and uh, we'll start sharing some projects. Okay, so the first project I have for you is one that I started last summer. And it was that vintage crochet blanket. Now, if you remember, I had done one blanket back in the first episode, which was like a pastel color blanket. And that one actually, although that was bigger than the one I'm going to show you right now, that was a queen size. Um, it had, I bet, 50 big squares of 15 rounds. That, unbelievably, went faster than this one. And I think the reason is that that one... The color, the yarn did all the work, put it that way. The color just started to happen because the skein had speckles of yarn and different gradations of color. So every square, I didn't have to really cut anything and start a new color in each round. Whereas this one only has five rounds, so it's a smaller um, crochet square. But because I changed color every section, I had to cut and connect, cut and connect, so that took a little longer. The other thing that I believe took a little longer was the fact that I was actually choosing the colors myself. So it was really like a color exploration that I loved. Um, just choosing the colors was so much fun. I talk about that in episode, I think it was eight or seven, where I talk about you know, the strategy behind how I put the colors together. But um, if you want to take a look at that, I'll put the link below. But let's let's take a look at it in its full glory. So here it is. I have to open it here. Hopefully you'll get a nice view of what it looks like. So it ended up being 12... By 12 and let me show you kind of the the squares themselves I really fell in love with this it was so much fun picking all the colors I love that one that looks really vintage and that one so you see how it's eight rows you start here in the center and then go one round and then here's the other round two, and then three, 
4, and 5. And on the fifth row, I connect as I go. So I connect it here, and then I connect it here. And then would keep going that way, or the opposite, depending where I was. But um, here it is. And it actually is, I would think it's more than a lap blanket. I think it could be, uh, I would say, a, um, a twin. But I really, really enjoyed it. And I don't believe that I replicated any square. So I got to tell you that by the time I was you know, almost like three quarters done, I was ready to put this down because it was just, I was so ready. I was kind of color exhausted, but um, I really, really enjoy it. And let me show you the border. So the border is in this really beautiful mustard. All the yarn in was uh, Drop Merino, Drops Merino, pretty much in all the colorways they had. And I still have plenty. I mean, I used one ball, and I still have plenty of each color in that ball. See that mustard? And then I did this little peekaboo um, turquoise. You can see that. A little single crochet there popping. And I thought that was really cute. And then I wanted to go on and change colors um, and keep going with different types of color borders. But you know what? Again, I was already like, I got to get this done. I just want to finish this and move on to something new and stop letting it be um, a UFO. But look at, and then I did this right here, which is, let me see if I can show you here, this little... Um, border in fuchsia that I think adds a really cute little whimsical look and then this little pico kind of detail here I thought that was really cute um, here at the end gives it a little je ne sais quoi if you will um, yeah so I am very very happy uh, U.S. 4 millimeter crochet. I'm trying to see if I have that needle with me. Um, but again, I loved it so much. I am going to, you know, I don't know if this happens to you. you you're working on something so much, so many times. And then you're like, okay, let me put it away. And then when I pop it out, it'll be like, oh, I'm so happy to see it again. So I think I'm going to use this. Um, sometime in the fall or in Christmas because the one that I have out right now in my sofa is the um, pastel one which I think is really nice because it reminds me of spring spring and summer and uh, just all the pretty colors and I love seeing it, look, it all folded up because it just gives that little, oh, it just, it's such, it's squishiness galore. So I definitely think that this is going to be kind of an heirloom piece. And again, I love the colors, combinations. The vintage blanket, nighty night. Love it. So hopefully this inspires crocheters out there, if, or maybe you already have one of these made. I would love to know. So let me know in the comment sections if you've ever made kind of like a crochet blanket like this, maybe with some retro or vintage colors. Love to hear about that. Okay, so that was like the major project that I had finished. Oh, I have to show you something also. I brought this here. Is, you see this? This is all the yarn that 
I cut off as I want. It's a nice, nice selection of all the colors I used. I will put them in this plastic bag. What do I do with them? I don't know. You know, I might do tassels. I think that would look really cute for something, but there are so many different sizes, but it just is a reminder of all the weaving I did. But I was weaving as I went with crochet, but as I cut them, I just wanted to save that. Okay, so let me look at the next project. The next project I have for you is a shawl that I knit. I've knit this shawl, I would say, one, two... This is my third time knitting this shawl, and I love it. And I highly recommend it because it's, number one, a free pattern in Ravelry, and number two, it's, it's something that anyone can do, um, and it's just the results are beautiful. Before I show you the one that I just took off the needles and blocked, um, it's in a charcoal gray, so it's dark, and you won't be able to see the textured pattern, and that's what I was hoping for. But um, I'm going to show you the second shawl I did of this pattern. The first one, I can't find it. I have to look for it, but it was uh, kind of in a camel, camel hair, and it was a brown khaki, and it turned out really pretty, and you could see the actual texture. Um... Then I did this one last year, and I don't believe I showcased this one in the channel, but it is um, the Textured Shawl Recipe by Elaine, and it's a free pattern. And this one I did in a US 4, so it's very, very small needle, um, and I did it in with sock yarn, whereas the one that I'll show you shortly was on a US 8 needle. And the reason I brought this out is for you to see how pretty is this texture. Now, most people, shawls I've seen out there, they do them all with one yarn. Here I changed. The, uh, the shawl is um, made up of this lovely 14 round repeat that creates this beautiful mesh. It looks... Uh, like a diagonal mesh. It looks a little bit like moss stitch. And then I did the stockinette on this other sock yarn color. And I love this sock yarn. You, you won't, might not be able to see it. Maybe here. It picks up. See that turquoise? It picks this up. Kind of reminds me of the waters of Cancun. Those turquoise waters. And the shawl, again, recipe, it leaves a lot for interpretation because it really doesn't tell you how to cast on and start. I mean, it tells you to, you know, cast on as you would for your preferred shawl recipe. And there's uh, plenty of forums in Ravelry that speak to how um, they did it to start. So you just use your um, favorite way to start your shawls. Even for those who've done so many um, Stephen West shawls, you just start with something like that and you're good to go. But it pretty much is a combination of 14 rows of stockinette stitch followed by this textured pattern, another 14 rows, and you continue going on as long as you want um, until the end, and in this case, in the end, you finish with only four rows of the pattern, as you can see here. And then you continue and doing maybe around 28 rows of garter stitch, which is knitting on each side, wrong and right side. Now look at these um, picots. The pattern does not call for the picots, but I decided to put them, and I thought it was so cute. And this turned out just really pretty. You could use it, think of it using it in the, in the beach. Um, in the summer, on a cool evening, a pair of linen white pants, a t-shirt. I think it would look really, really pretty. And then obviously the, the recipe also includes the givens that you're going to be creasing um, 
on the left and on the right in the beginning of the wingspan as well as making your left and right increases right here in the middle of the spine. But I just think it's such a pretty shawl. And again, you can do so many. You can do color combinations. Um, I can't really see what I'm doing, but hopefully you can get a picture because the camera's a little too far for me to be able to see. But again, it's pretty. It's... Yeah, I really liked it. I've used it a couple of times last summer I did. So this is the actual um, pattern. And I wanted to show you again because this one really kind of really shows the, um, the pattern itself. That I like that to pop. Then what I decided to do is I had found, not found, I had bought this yarn. And I showcased it in one of the episodes when I went with Sheila and... Um, and Sally to that town called, I think it was called Bird in Hand in Pennsylvania. And I went to Labadee Looms. Yeah, that's the store. And she had this beautiful skein of alpaca. And I'm trying to see if I have here. It had around, I would say, 400 or 500 grams. It didn't have a label, so I think she spun it from a local local sheep there, local yarn. But it was so beautiful and so soft. And I love the charcoal that I said, you know what? I really want to make that shawl because it's so beautiful and so soft. The only thing I found was that the pattern itself, just as I showed you right now, really wasn't popping um, it was kind of hiding itself in the, in the shawl because of the yarn. But you know what? I kept going because I think it's just turned out really pretty. But let me show it to you. Enough talk and, uh, show it to you. So this is the next texture shawl. And you can see against the light a little bit here where you see those sections that I was telling you about. There it is beginning and I actually did a couple of more um, sections here can you just repeat it as long as you want to go I wanted to use up all the yarn I had um, let me show you the wingspan and I absolutely love it here's that whole stock in that section I did not do pico edging on this one and it, it is you can see the marble here maybe you can see closer how soft I mean it's just like you can feel what you can feel you can see maybe it has a beautiful drape to it and um, it's like butter it feels like literally it feels like cashmere Very, very nice. I really, really like it. And I'll tell you, I really measured it, calculated it nicely because I said I want to use everything I can from the from the skein. And this is what was left this little bit. Let me show it to you up closer. So, I'll see if it's focusing. See how it's like a marled two-ply? So I had this little bit left, and it was perfect. Thank goodness. But, um, and the other thing I like about it, it's going to be funny for those that don't have cats, it's that it disguises all the cat hair. <laughs> it really looks like the cat hair is part of the, the yarn. I don't even know if you can see it. But it feels mm, just soft and just really nice. And again, I can't use it right now any, um, until the fall, but I, I'm looking forward to it, to wearing it um, next fall and, and into the holiday season. But 
yeah, if you want to do a really nice shawl with great texture and you can just, you know, do it in any type of yarn you want, you just have to repeat the pattern as long as you get the size you want. It can, you can even do a small one, a kerchief. You could um, definitely use that, that pattern. And I'll pop in a picture of here somewhere um, on the one the lady shows in the pictures in Ravelry. I'll pop it in someone here so you can take a look at it. So that's that. So that is the, again, the texture shawl recipe shawl um, done in a US 8 needle with uh, alpaca fine merino. Very, very comfy. Okay, let me take this off. So yeah, I'm excited. The next pattern I um, project, finished object I did, was again, I was trying to get really inspired with um, spring being right around the corner. And I had just finished this and I said, okay, I need, I need some color back into my life. Some, an injection, a punch of spring colors. So I went and looked at in my stash and I found this yarn. And this yarn is from a company, and I'm going to see if I have the label here. Uh, here it is. It's called, i uh, see if it focuses, Mustache Yarn. And the colorway is Beauty and Her Beast. And I totally loved these colors. So here you go. Hopefully you can capture how cute these colors are. Um, the colorway again, Beauty, um, Beauty and Her Beast. This is two identical skeins that are twisted together. It's 7525. Um, and it has a 460 yards, 100 grams. And um, I actually was left with a lot of it, um, which I was happily surprised. I usually do this section here from here to here, like eight inches. And in this case, I didn't. I did like maybe five. I just wanted to make sure I had enough for the, for the whole foot because I did it um, cuff down um, and I started with this ribbing knit two purl two this was done on a US one needle 20 rows and then continued continued but you can see how cute it has like that little bit of a really shade of rose pink and then has a little bit of chocolate those buttery yellows blues, purples, it has some forest green, this is more of a grassy green and a mint green, this is more of a, I would say like a burgundy, I don't know if the camera's really showing it, that's a nice pop of fuchsia pink, there's that rose pastel ballerina pink, and then we're back to the chocolate, um, I think it has... I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven repeat. And then it starts again. Um, yeah, very, very, very nice. And I did it in a US one, although I usually do a US two. It's because um, the U.S. too, I'm seeing that after some wear, um, it sometimes starts like slouching down when I do my traditional cast off 64 stitches. So it's a classic um, recipe for a sock on a small, medium size. And I kind of wanted it tighter, right? So I did U.S. 1. I'm working on another pair of socks that I'll show you shortly. And that I cast at 68. I added four more stitches. This isn't too tight, um, but I'm kind of testing, see which is, you know, the sweet spot that I really like as I move down to different types of needles. And I did a German short row 
which I wanted to take advantage of those colors. I would have hoped that this little line that came in bleeding from this color would have just stayed here. So you would have only seen that. And then the transition would have been just perfect starting right here with the blue. But again, based on the number of stitches, um, that's what happens. Uh, but I really, really like them. And they look and they remind me definitely of spring. I did these. Um, I'll show you those needles in a second because I have them on my next pair. I wanted to talk about the needles I, I've been using, testing them out. But again, so this is my spring spring socks and I can't wait to start using them. Let me see if I have anything else to tell you about these. Oh, uh, one thing, their sock label is so cute. The sock label of Mustache Yarns has a saying that, or it's a slogan, I don't know if it's a company slogan, but it's usually in most of their skeins, and it's stash in good health. Isn't that a great one? I love that line. I think I'm going to start using that line every time I um, do a cheers, you know, like, hey, stash in good health. Great line. Stash in good health. Okay, so that's that. The next project I wanted to show you is uh, works in progress. So the next item is another pair of socks. Again, I'm inspired with all this spring happening. And, ooh, did I lose some? And this, I found this yarn in my stash, and I, want, I was looking for something green, like a very Kelly green that reminded me of grass. And then I wanted to add the heel or the toe in a contrasting color, say a t like a pink. I was thinking of a tulip. So this is what I came, um, this is what I found. And this yarn is from, I don't have the label with me, but it's called, it's a yarn from Barn Yarn Knits. And you see how pretty, now, I'll tell you something. The yarn's name, now it really is, the name is completely opposite to spring. The yarn is called, the colorway, Snowdrop. So I'm, I'm assuming it's a field of grass and then snow has fallen on it because the majority of it is white. But I totally saw it the opposite way. I just want, I just saw the green is like grass popping out. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful colors and shades of, oops, of that green. Hopefully you can see it. It's a fingering sock. It's 75 superwash merino and 25% nylon. 463 yards for a total of 100 grams. And again, barn, barn yard knits. I'll put it here on the bottom of the screen. So I started, I said this is going to be the base of the sock, definitely. Then I was looking for a pink, and I said, you know what, let me, I found this pink, I think I have it in here, oh yeah, so I used this pink from for another pair of socks I had, and I don't remember what color way, or I might have said this in another episode, because I know I've done socks with this color, this beautiful pink, I said, this I want the cuff to be, and I'm going to do the toes on this. And then for the heel, I'm thinking of a lavender, which I have to look for. But this is what I have so far. And I just think it's, to me, it's, it's spring. Let me show you. Isn't that cute? Oh, look at the little daisy. Put that little progress keeper. I think it just, um, here's that really pretty pink. And I don't know if it's translating again well in the camera, but I cast it on, in this case, I did 68 stitches on a US 1 needle, 20, 20 rows, and then I started with the barnyard knits colorway snowdrop you see that green I feel I, I think it looks like grass to me I don't know it just makes me happy very happy 
So this I just started, so hopefully I'll have this ready for the next episode. And then I was showing you that I started um, using these needles. Now I'm a double pointed needle person. That's how I taught myself to knit socks. Um, I think I said this at one point in the episodes, like, I would love to learn Magic Loop. I think I tried it once, and it I just, I guess, like anything, you have to keep doing it to get the hang of it. And I wasn't just, I wasn't feeling it. And I love my double pointed needles. But um, I had heard about these, and these are called the Addy Crazy Trio Shorts. Um, let me show those to you. And... Uh, they actually came out a while ago, so. But I really, really am enjoying them. Enjoying them. So you just have two on the sock, and you use the third one to continue knitting, um, which is pretty cool. That's a, I got with them in a 2.5, and then this one is the 2.25 millimeter. Now let me show you something about the needles too that I think is pretty cool. So it has two, here, let me do that one. It has two tips that you can choose from as you go. One is, let me see if I can see it, you can see it, is kind of like this blunt, short tip. And then you can choose to knit with, let me see if you can see it, this really pointy, pointy side. So it gives you those two options. And I actually like the pointy side. So I just, as I pull it out and start, I just, you know, flick it, flip it to the section or to the part that has the pointy. But really, really liking it. And then I just like that too, because that reminded me, I think I showed it to you right now, just little daisy. Spring is around the corner. So that's that. So that's all, actually, I have. I'm looking at my notes. Um, yeah, that's all I have, my friends. This is a short episode, but I wanted to show you what I was up to. At least I had something um, big that I finished. And, uh, and also, I just, again, I missed you all tremendously. And I was thinking about you all, hoping that you were all doing well, starting and kicking off your year well. Again, I can't believe it's the end of uh, the first quarter. It's unbelievable. And even my friend, um, Tom, who is um, Sheila's husband, um, he's such a sweetheart. He is, he's so talented in, in, in so many other crafts that I'm not. Um, for example, he just became a beekeeper, so I've asked him if I could film um, his bees, so maybe I can go ahead and do that sometime in the spring or summer. Um, and he just does these planter boxes that are amazing, and these beautiful, exquisite birdhouses that it's like Frank Lloyd Wright replica replicas and small oh my god some amazing things um but he actually told me which made my day um he even said hey you know what i i haven't seen you upload an episode i kind of miss it um why don't you go ahead and put one up and that was so sweet it made my day you know somebody that really is not a knitter was actually watching my episode and that's sweet you know sheila and always watches it. So thank you, Sheila and Tom, for being um, some of my best number one fans out there. You guys encourage me all the time. So thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode, as I hope you all did too. And again, um, shoot me a comment. Let me know what you're going to be up to. What's your wath, right? What's on the horizon in your needles? I'm thinking I'm going to pull out some linen and start looking for a pattern um, to do maybe a linen top for the beach for the summer. I don't know. Let me know what you're up to. So until next episode, my friends, please be well, be happy, be safe, and remember, keep on making. Ciao, everyone. Wonderful to be back with you all. Take care. Bye.